advanced chord and song structure. It's about that time. Sometimes you make a dollar track, you want to progress from one moment to the next. You want to do that smoothly. You want your transition to flow. Now, today we're going to get into not one chord change, but two chord changes within one song. And I'm only using four sequences on the MPC Live to do it. How are we going to do it? Let's check it out. That's today's video. You ready? Let's go do it right now. But before that happens, let's go check out what Super Booth was all about, okay? Hey, what's up? I'm Analog Kitchen and thank you for checking out yet another video. Now, if this is your first time here, welcome. Thank you for watching and stick around till the end of this video because I'll tell you all about Patreon, Discord, the community, the challenges and much more. I've survived the super booth. It was absolutely amazing. It was my first time going there, which is stupid because I've heard about it so many times and I knew of all my fellow sim friends going there. But for some reason I thought, yeah, well, you know, I go to ADE, I go to other fairs, so, you know, I'll pass up on it. No, no sp specific reason. Boy, was I wrong. It's an absolute amazing uh, thing to witness. Uh, I've shot a few things. I'm not the kind of guy to walk around and, and, and show you like, this is the new synth, this, and this is the new synth, that. I was there just checking out the vibe. I came on the media, have um, kindly provided um, me with um, uh, the opportunity to go there um, as there's something in the near future that I will not confirm or deny, but something's happening. So guess where I am? I am at... Super booth! Okay, now this is absolutely one of the most amazing fairs. There's so many synth people here. Um, we did day one on character because we drove from Rotterdam. We came, we stepped in the car, drove all night, went straight to Super booth, didn't sleep, stayed all day. And then last night was, you know, let's go and do sleep a bit. But now we're here, we're going to check out a few things and I'll uh, take you with me on what it is that we're going to do. You ready? Let's go. So guess what's happening? I walk in and immediately there's YouTubers here. So who do I meet? Hello, man. Yeah. Hello. So hey. what's up, guys? You guys good? Yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Having a great time here. We really <laughs> enjoy ourselves. You're doing the panel, are you not? No, not really. Just enjoying the show. Yeah. The sun is shining. The really? weather is sweet here. <laughs> <laughs> We're standing in the sun here. We're standing out front of the IKEA multimedia stand. And there's a super booth. This is not your first super booth. No, it's not our first super booth. It's actually the first, fourth one, is, um, if I remember correctly. Yeah, the first time we went here, uh, presenting our first synthesizer back in the days, the Uno synth. Then from there, we move on and move on along, along and along. And uh, well, this year we are not presenting any synthesizer. I mean, I cannot either confirm or deny that, that there's something <laughs> going on. But yeah, uh, but anyway, for the public, we are actually showing the, our, uh, our line of, uh, uh, of monitors, uh, of studio monitors. Yeah, uh, those are because I hear a lot of stuff about the iLouds. A lot of people are telling me yes. that it's absolutely a, a great solution, especially for the price range. Yes, because in the end, you get uh, a vet. You, you get a lot of feature for in a very small package, uh, and for the first, we are actually the, the precision line, for example, the loud, the loud precision is our first uh, studio, big studio monitors. But still, in a small package, given that we are still DSP controlling uh, the uh, the speaker, you get what you may be familiar with the MTM, so the uh, the calibrations uh, the, the given by Arc software. Uh, into the speakers, uh, but on top of that, we we get the coherency phase, which is super great for transient uh, response. Uh, which, to be fair, for electronic musician is something that yeah we kind of needed very we very much. So we do need it. Yeah. But your uh, specific uh, job description is what do you do within product IK? manager? Product manager. I actually pop, I'm, I'm actually the product manager for the Uno line, so the synthesizer, the drum machine, etc., and for the Tirax uh, suite of mixing and mastering plugins. Okay. But you're also a Dollars performer. I'm also a Dollars performer. Oh, because people people on the channel are going, okay, what is the connection between the, these two cats? And that's actually how we uh, got connected. We yeah. spoke over at ADE. Um, and I'm going to say something. He's confirmed that he's going to be performing at our next Kitchen Club ADE event. He's gonna be there! Yeah! 
<laughs> it's gonna be super fun and yeah i have to admit it it was a really a pleasure because i was a follower of the channel and then i said the project just link it but my, my two neighbors just link it's like you can actually contact him oh damn it i can actually contact him <laughs> and, if I, and, and then, then, then that's yeah. and then and now we're here now we're here at super Blue. yeah well yeah. thanks for inviting me over and thank you for being an absolutely great companion it we're having fun plan. yeah and um yeah um let's just go crazy and uh Congratulations on the on the on the system, on the stuff that you're doing with IK. I really support it. I like thank the brand, you. guys. You should check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. And now, uh, I think for us, it's beer time. Yes, it's definitely beer o'clock. Yeah, get definitely. out of there. Right. <laughs> Have fun. This day is getting crazier and crazier. You can hear sounds all around. Um, I'm at the Valco Affix stand at the minute because those paddles look interesting, and there might be something for the end location live set. So you just drive it. And he's stuck everything on, the, on different stuff. Yeah, because when you go here... Yeah, so this is how, how much you would, you would drive it, actually. Kind of loud and quiet. Yeah. So you have to compensate as you go. Yeah, you have the gain space, which is which is you. Yeah, which is fine. But which yeah. means that okay, but it will. This is the quietest because it grits the the hardest. Yeah, yeah, and it's like it's smashing it a bit more yeah. when you're hitting it. So far, so good. This day is going really well. The weather is absolutely stunning. On the way to Electron now. Let's see what Electron's got in store. That was Nikolai. Nikolai is the uh, product designer for the new analog heat uh, with an update and with uh, base focus. And it's cool to just talk to the people that actually make the machines to talk about the stuff that they've made and whether it works, yes or no. Um, which is basically something I like to do. Okay, so let's head outside. Yellow, yeah, we're gonna go outside? Let's go inside. Okay, we're gonna go outside and check it out. What connects all these people? What is the vibe? Why are people coming to this place? Um, apart from Berlin being an absolutely amazing city where a lot of creativity seems to flow, a lot of people seem to find themselves, but this specific event, this specific thing, why do all those synth people like to connect and come together? I don't know. Is it the fact that Berlin is different from anything else in the world? Is it because uh, we are just sin nerds and we want to be around sin and sin nerds. I think that might be it. Well, for me, it's been an absolutely two wonderful days. Of, I've not encountered anything like this before. I talk to my friends about synthesizers, but do I talk to my friends in this way? Do I see so many people here? Probably not. You can sense it's a very cool, calm vibe. You can see that a lot of people are into it. We're going to see some performances. Unfortunately, tomorrow we're doing that drive back to Holland again, so that's flooring it, going somewhere, because I'm playing, I'm DJing in the night, so it's all good. So it was cool to be there. There's some footage that I will drop over the next coming week. Now, what is so advanced on the chord structure that I have is that I do a few things that work together. Um, chord structures is where I think the power lies because not only when you go in ostinato, what I usually do on my tracks, the first um, uh, pattern sticks on the same root note so you get that driving kind of housey, you know, that melodic techno feel. Usually on the MPC, you will use different sequences to spread your song 
out in. And that is what I used to do. And I used to use a lot because I'm thinking, okay, I'm using a bridge, I'm using a pre-chorus, I'm using um, um, an interlude, a prelude, whatever. So I went the classical way of composing a song, different structures in a song, use different sequences. Then I thought, What's happening is that I'm losing myself a little bit. There's too much happening. And sometimes um, certain things work better than other things. So can I condense it down to just the things that the bare necessities that what you would need to hear on a track, which is a very cumbersome and very grueling process because now you have to just like sacrifice certain things within your music that might help you out uh, when you're playing live. Uh, and more options give you a little bit more of a cool vibe. You know, you're less insecure. But still, I went with four different um, sequences or four patterns, if you will. Now, the first pattern is also the intro pattern. But what I've done is I've mapped away certain mutes and certain things where things are not playing that you can later on hear if I add them, that it gives you the impression that, hey, he's migrating to another pattern, but I am not. So. There's different layers of stuff on the patterns that are playing so that I, if I mute it on the mixer or I map it away or I mute it on the Octatrack or on the, on the MPC, it feels like it's not playing, but it's, it is playing already. Now, this is the trick that I'm using. Then when it comes to the um, migrating into the chord structure, my drop has got a chord structure of eight bars right so it's going to go one two three four two two three four four do, 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 do. so that's a whole melody there now i can look at my crowd and see if they're up for waiting that long or taking them into a longer structure of music then i will do it it's mostly a day vibe or a cool vibe where people are a little bit more clued on or not really paying attention when you're up in that adrenaline kind of vibe and you're going and and your set is really energetic then most of the time you'd like to move faster even within the chord structure so then i will use four different bars instead of eight bars now this means that because i usually don't do it that way but this means that all of a sudden i've got more options now and i've done i've done it live and i see that whoa there's a whole new layer of of interaction of adrenaline of emotion that the crowd latches onto because they feel whoa what's happening so first the drop with the eight bars everybody's like wow what is happening and then i'll come in with a four chord structure which is different then people are oh okay so what happens is you get this feeling of happiness this feeling of togetherness but it's all to do with how the chords are working i will go into what the chords are and how i've worked them there's a trick that I do with the minor and the major chord and I switch them up. So I'll start on the major, go into the minor, go into the minor, go into the minor, end on the major. So that's a revolving loop that is pleasing. And yeah, you know where you're coming from, you know where you're going, so you know what's happening. And then there's another uh, structure that just does the climbing. So if you're climbing, you know, the notes will get higher. It will invoke adrenaline as well. So these two things together, is a powerful combination to use. Now I can talk about it for days, but maybe it's best if I show you. If still anything is unclear, do leave a comment in the section below, or yeah, Patreon is an option. You get closer to me and we'll have these Discord chats and community um, um, events that will really work out. So um, do check that out. Okay, now without further ado, let's head over to the last set and let's make it work, shall we? Okay, there's the NPC here. The NPC is going to take care of everything uh, midi wise song structure wise there's some beats coming from there uh, i will explain the, my abc structure as i get uh, going so you'll understand how i built this track up here is my um, octo track octo track taking care of drums then there's a, a few delay uh, a delay and a black sky sitting right here the strymon black sky um, then i've got uh, dave smith tetra i've got a black box 1010 10 black box here with a midi fighter connected to it so i can play uh, my different um, parts if, if I will my different effects there's some rises here there's a clap that I can play uh, I don't think that I've got this stuff connected at the moment have I no I have not um, okay but that doesn't matter because we don't really need this today there's the mini tar bass line the acid box 3 some channels uh, from the Akai are getting into the acid box 3 and you'll see what happens now if I'm going to play this first track I'll start with a hypnotizing vibe so first I've got a kick drum and some hypnotizing vibe the hypnotizing 
sample, which is clearly a C category sound. It does not, um, um, the track doesn't lean on this sound, but it gives a little bit of atmosphere. So my atmospheres, my white noises, my impacts and stuff, that's all C category stuff, uh, which is the makeup of my track. So you can hear that there's a bit of a, a groove going on. Now, this is the first pattern. This is how I would build up the track. Um, if I go to the next sequence page, you'll see this is track number five. So this is bank A, which means track one, two, three, four. This is track five, we're on five, one. So, yeah. I've got drums from the octa track already playing on tracks one through seven. Track eight is my master output on the octa track. That's how I said it's master track, which means I can do funny stuff, funny delays, cutoffs, and all that kind of uh, stuff on the master. So I'm using track eight as a master. So of the octa, octa meaning eight track, I'm only using seven tracks. And then seventh track is music. So I've got a sample here which is an arpeggio that's constantly going to stay on the same root note. It plays notes, it plays an arpeggio, so it's going to play different notes, but it will always go to the note that you already hear on the hypnotizing vibe that's coming from the NPC, right? Okay, now on the crossfader, I can do this cool live element because I don't want to be just like playing around with the filters. I just want to be like a little bit interactive. Here we go, bam, so cool. Now, if I don't know where I am, I can follow this line on top of the uh, guy that's going. So this pattern is not the longest pattern that I have because this pattern goes over eight bars. Six, seven, two, eight, two, three, four, and back. So that's what we have. Now, track one here is my kick drum on the octa track. I turn it off like so, or I turn it off like so. So there's two ways of turning it off. I prefer to do this one because, as you can hear, this fader is vastly going south, so that's um, not ideal, but it happens. Then track two, close head, track three, snare, track four, a tom, listen, bam, 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 to create an infinite loop, to create something that keeps revolving so you'll keep dancing, right? So this is all nice and dandy. That theme is already going to give away much of the adrenaline, much of where we're going with the track, so I don't want to just be there right now. So what I'm doing is I am going to um, slowly check out what I've got right here. I know that I've got the drums sitting uh, on the uh, MPC that are being mapped away on this launch control XL. So this one's connected to the MPC. So if I open this up, I think there are some drums somewhere hidden away, which I don't hear. Then my... I don't think they're playing on, uh, on this particular um, pattern. So, all right, that's what we have. Let's go to more drums. So that's what I had. I have... Nice. So this is all 808 based drums, except for the kick, obviously. The kick is a little bit more uh, fat, but then that's a... Cool. And there's a loop on six, listen to this. With a little bit of a ride, so again, something not really that, that like important, but it is important enough for it to be there. And this is how I just think of my tracks. Do I need to hear it? Yes. If not, if it's a 99%, it's probably not going to make the cut. So every sample that you'll hear has a purpose, otherwise it would not be on this uh, song, right? So, so all the tracks together will play this. I can do it like this, or I can just hold function and just like arm all these tracks and then I only have to do this one thing that I can do and release it like so. So that's how I do it. Then there's this thing on seven that I set. I'm going to just like uh, make it a little bit more interesting later on. So I'm not going to tell you what it is right now. Then on the mixer, as I said, the first red fader is the kick drum. Second fader is going to be like TG77 that for some reason just stopped uh, operating today. So I need to look into that. Tracks three and uh, four are the, what is this? I'll find out what it is. This is the effects here, return. This is the meter bass here, this is the first green one. And this is the subsequent 37 sitting next to it. Then the first stereo fader.
slider is the Akai output and the second is the rest of the drums here. So that's the mixer done. So if I was just playing the octave track, I only need to play the red faders like so, right? This is just octave track. Okay. Now I can already play my song from here if I wanted to. But see me? Shut up. I can only I can play my track from here if I wanted to, but what I would want is to already get a bit of a vibe going. So I will go to the next um, pattern over and see what is happening because I know there's more stuff playing. Bass lines going to be playing. Let's open this up. Then you get this. As you can hear. Let's open this up a little bit more. So that's just the basic backbone of the track, right? Open up my effect. And you can hear that it's already doing something. It's, it's a lot because it's pretty. But I don't have to open up my effects completely. But it gives a little bit of room to the to the um, um, uh, minotaur here. Yep, okay. Now listen, this is what I'm going to do on the um, uh, Akai. I'm going to go for some call and response, which means that if I'm taking out all the drums here, I've got drums already sitting here on the Akai. And more hypnotizing stuff. Bam, bam. Wow, wow. Boom, boom. And that plays a call response thing with the Minotaur. So listen to this. Yeah, and then with, the, with some other drums that play. They're a bit on the loud side, but I can just debate like, okay, let's turn down the, the, uh, the guy slightly, you know what I mean? And then the octave drums. Cool, right. So this is already working. Yep, like it. Now, as I said, going back to the first um, sequence, this is the backbone of the track. Like I said, the ostinato part. Doom, doo, 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 doo. Nothing changes here. Everything stays on the same uh, root note, right? Cool. Yeah. Go back to the first one. One, two, back to my first pattern. See, nothing too complicated. What is this? Let's see what's happening here. Nothing. What did I? I know what I connected. Yeah, I know what it was. So let's take this out because this is the VP9000 that I was experimenting with. But what I would want is I need my effects to go. So real life patching going on right here. Cool. Now the Tenten Black Box is playing something. Mm -hmm. Put it off, filter it up. A crash and an impact. Something that keeps running, so I've got a little bit of longevity on what's ever happening because the drums you can, um, um, I think they're pretty cool, but they are sparse at the same time, right? So that's what you can hear. They're pretty like straightforward, um, but I need something else. Okay, now what I have done, on track seven is I use track seven always as a means of some music. So I can debate to start my track like this. That's how I will do it. So I will just do these passes up and down. Now the first one, as you can hear, let's go back to this. Most of the open hat, most of the stuff is just going out. Two, three, and boom. No bass lines, no call and response, but that's the cool thing. Now, I've got a sample sitting here, which I will play you now. And I'll play you this on the second pattern. Go in.
And this thing just keeps going on. It's a very long sample, and then at some point it will just start. This is where it starts. So this is the going. It's very loud, by the way. So let's turn it down a little bit. But everything, I can build this up after a few minutes of playing this uh, the drums that you're hearing. Drum roll. And that's how I play. Then I'll turn this off, go to the next pattern and play. And this is where the first of the music is going to start. And what I've done, I've stuck the music on the asset box screen. That's playing with uh, the mini tar. Now let's go in and see when we find these chords, see what's happening right here. Right, like this, this, look. Now you see what I've done. I start with my minor chord here, it goes boom, G. Go. So you can see what the chords are right here. A, F, and back to G. So I'll start on one chord. Two, 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 three, let's play a kick. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I'll go back. One. So this is cool, and I can play this as a as a breakdown with the kick out, or I can up the go like I say, like yeah, I really like this. Uh, there's more adrenaline. Let's play this in with my bass line. So that works. Our pedro coming here. Nice. Now, the trick that I've done here is when I go to my next sequence page, now a completely different chord structure will happen. And I'll do the climb with the bass line. Listen to what's happening here. Now, this thing, amazing, because everybody just really seems to dig this vibe. Because what's happening is, I'm turning this off, this bass line keeps constantly going. And it goes up. And then we go back. So this in itself also keeps running and going. And these little things keep telling you to be like, oh yeah, keep dancing, keep dancing. And Pedro, it helps it. So there's another arpeggio here. Let's see where it is. I keep constantly keep focusing on those high notes in the arpeggio right here. So you see that there's again a bit of a thing going up. So I want this this last pattern to constantly go up. One, two, 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 three, four, four, two, three, and back. So this goes faster than the other chord structure that I have. Now that other chord structure really works. Then I'll play my drop, play my filters, and the fun part is this thing that I got on 7 works together with all these chords. This is amazing. So I can play it like this, and I got a nice musical drop, and think like, okay, let's go back to that other thing that we have, I play this. And this keeps going up. So a lot of stuff is happening within these chords all of a sudden. Cool, drum roll. Three, three, four, up. Here we go, play it. Nice one. So now you hear what's happening with this thing and with the mini tar, right? I will play the chords a little bit and the arpeggio.
we'll go back. Basics, you know what I mean? So this is what I think is an advanced way of, of advancing your track. You go in, you work it, you look at what's happening, you feel out the crowd, and there's different things. So, first pattern, boom. And this constantly keeps going, constantly keeps going. And every time when it reaches uh, the last one, look how slow it's going. And then it goes back. Now, I can still filter it down or play around with it if I want to. There's a filter here, it's on track 7, I know that, so I can just hide it in the background. And then you hear it, you hear a little bit of a hypnotizing vibe that I have right here. You hear the black box working, and you hear an 808 loop that I stuck in the background. Of that old school hip hop vibe that I would like on my track as well, which gets redundant as soon as the kick comes in, because then you don't hear it anymore. But you know, you can just you know play around with it. So the different layers make for almost a three-dimensional way of working your track. So when I build up my, 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 my tune in the beginning, I will start with this. Go into the hypno, this is a hypno, I call it hypno. So there's a hypno right here. Hypno, this one. Turn this off, turn this off. This is how I probably use my track. This is what inspired me to get going. Old school hip hop cat like me, this really did it for me. Like, oh yeah, cool, yeah. We've got a bit of a snare drum thing going. I like it. Old school drum computers, they'll do the trick, you know? Then, the kick drum. This should be a groove that should already be working. As you can hear, there's this right, 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 so that's cool. So there's no music involved whatsoever. And before I start playing around with this thing, which is a theme and some impact on the floor, you would love to just like hypnotize the crowd song. So let's do the, redo that stuff again. So these are my drums, right? Then I'll play that hypnotizing thing. I don't know if you heard it in the background. It's just another loop. Play the rest of the drums. And also, very important, whatever, this is bank five. This was track five, phase five. So it, it all corresponds. So the music part here is corresponding with the music part here. And this is the first pattern, right? So I can play this like for a, for a while because this, I've made sure that this sounds well on a uh, sound system. It works, the, the levels are cool. There's no mixing going on. You can see that there's no mixing. Um, that's just leveling. This is the, the tent and black box. Now this thing is of course a, a category C vibe. Um, it adds to the atmosphere of the track. For now, this is just A category stuff that you hear. Maybe if I take out this thing, for me, this could be A category stuff, which means that this in itself can be a track that I can work, yeah? If I take out uh, lows here, I can work it. I don't even have to play the snare, so I can play it from here. One, two, three, and cool. Yeah, this would be a vibe. This would be a transition kind of vibe, right? Okay, cool, snare in. Then seven off. We'll go to the next sequence. Bum, bum. Can, can, bum, bum. Still the same vibe. I'm not even playing long bass lines here. I, everything that I'm doing here needs to be groove related. Bum, bum. Hey, boom, boom. Ha, ha. Yeah. Uh, uh. Boom, boom. That, that, that. Boom, boom. And I'll, I'll choose my boxes accordingly. So um, I know that this thing's got a nice punch. This uh, meter. This is what I hear a lot, progressive house. Oh, let's open up the filters. But the magic is here, where it's pulsating like a heartbeat. This thing will just kick you in the butt when you're standing in front of the speaker, so you'll feel the music, which means I have now got a physical relation with you on the dance floor through my music. Very important. I can also open it up if it needs to be a little bit more gung-ho, but for now, it's all cool, cool. And, and so what I will do is I already mute all the drums, um, and then play the first drop, going in, two, three, and...
obviously not this loud, but you understand what's happening, right? Arpeggios, magic. Cool. And this was just a false uh, drop. I'll go back. Let's say one, two, three, back in. By this time, the sound engineer knows, oh, this guy knows what he's doing. Okay, he's got like some really weird sounds. But the kick drum's always in the same place. Let's just start and, and yeah, smiley curve the, the room a little bit more so you start to feel a little bit of pressure on your eyes. You feel that he's upping the, the, the kick drum. Yeah, nice. So, again, now we're going to introduce that theme that we have on 7. Filter it down a bit. Now this is just an 8 bar sequence. This however, is going very long, so it's going to start again. Open it up now. Boom. Two, three, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These two will start again. They are nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Now, what happens is if I go in and if I go here, I have these settings for this for this pattern set per track which means that I can now when I go in um, tell I need to go in and I need to what was it? This is the way it is. I need to tell the this track track seven that it's going to play a quarter of the length of what the total sequences is playing. Right? So normally it's 64 steps, now it's times four. So it's going to be a very long sample that it plays. And you'll see it if I go out on how slow this is running. Boom, two, if I go to my kick, you'll see bam, 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 bam. So that's what I love about the Octa track, the different tracks can have different lengths, obviously. So I can play a long sample here, because a lot of people would think that, oh, there's only 64 um, the steps, that's how long a sample should be. You should break it up, break up the pattern and tell the different tracks how long they should be playing for. This is very slow. This is only playing the first one. Bop, 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 bop. See? So there's different things that I did with the octa track right here. And then you can space out the, the attention of the, of, the, of the track. Snare drum, the drum roll that I mapped on scene B. There's two scenes here. Mapped it out. The rest of the drums are going to go in. One, two, three, four. Up the filter. Two, three, and. So this track is working. So I can either start with a theme or not start with a theme. If it's a little bit more mellow, or this is the first track that I would be playing, then I would not start with this. If it's already happening, it's later on in the day, I'll start with a theme. Cool. Now I'm going to keep the theme in. I'm going to lower the filter, as I said. Let's do it simple. I'll go to the next sequence page. I'll take out the drums, everything except seven. Go in, go in and say, next one is the drop. Level everything out. I think the mini guys a bit on the loud side. Now usually what I would do is what I said in the beginning, this is me. I will just like add drums to this and this will be my fourth sequence. Is what I usually do. And it works, right? And then you have something like this. Right? Works. No problem. Open this up, blah, 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 blah. But now I'm thinking, you know, no. Turn everything off. Build this up a little bit more. I'm going to go to the next pattern, so this is blinking, so you know there's the next one. So new music is going to start, right? One, two, three. Go in. Nice. Go. 
bass coming from the tetra here. And now this is the magic. Because this in itself can also be a drop. Let's try that. Take everything out on the other truck. I'd like to welcome Richard Bradshaw, Mark Kiggin and Robert13 as patrons for this week. Welcome. And they're following it on patreon.com slash kitchen. Now, Patreon is a cool support platform if you like the vibe. And, you know, it's built up in tiers, which means that, you know, you won't be breaking the bank. Anywho, but, you know, for uh, the price of a coffee a month, uh, thank you, I do love my coffee. You know, you get to support me and then the next tier up would give you um, an entrance to Discord where there's a whole community. I think we're about 180 people now in there. You know, and we all talk shop, we talk about production, about travel, about super booth, about gear, gas, uh, packaging, um, nuisance, demos as well. We're making music together even, so that's... Um, also a very cool vibe so if you've got more questions than answers that might be your one stop shop so thanks to the new patrons thank you for watching thanks also to the new channel members so it's going it's growing in the right direction and i'm very thankful that i can be in a position where this is happening now this is how i work this thing i think i'm onto something here Try it out for yourself, you know, it doesn't need to be that advanced, but you know, in the end of the day, if you get more chord structures to work, then that might be a cool thing for you. If you want to get a little bit more longevity out of your track, because the more chord structure, the differences you can use, the longer your track can be. And with a dollar setup, your tracks are already longer than usual. Um, a lot of people ask me like, how many songs would I need for a two hour set? If I tell you that, close to 10 to 15 minutes I can do with one song I only need eight songs to do a two hour set right there are some in-betweens there are some transitions there are some different things and some boxes that can do different vibes but in the end of the day I think that as time passes passed on within the electronic music um, especially with commercials and radio and TV songs get condensed to just the bare necessity, the bare minimum of what they needed to do. So now everybody's in a hurry. So as a DJ, you come out of the gate flying, the production has already been structured in a way that it's constant climax, climax, climax. And I don't think that that is what music was uh, meant to be like that. I don't think it was intended to be that. I think music is intended to be a, a conversation that you have between the one that's making the music and the one that's receiving the music. And if a vibe is cool, then obviously, uh, why not have it last a little bit longer? And that's the, the one of the USPs that I think this Dollars uh, community has. Because when you play Dollars, you have to you have so many boxes to, to think about that you, you're not in a hurry anyway. You know, you can make it as fast as you would like to. But what I find is that after I deprogram the crowd, because when I'm deep, when I'm on after a DJ, they're constantly in that hamster wheel, hamster wheel, running, running, running. I have to just like defragment the crowd a little bit and just like once they get where I'm going from and they understand like, I mean, I can beg for him to just go like drum roll, guns and everyone and it's not happening. They'll, they'll, they'll have very peace with it. And that's when the magic happens. And that's where you can do multiple things. I mean, I'm preaching to the choir. If you're playing in a band, you know this stuff already. But for DJs and electronic producers, hallelujah. So, so I'm happy that that is a thing that happens. I can play my subsequent for about five minutes and just work it and work the filters. I can go into a drop with the three or three and just the kick and just like do a little bit of acid house that can last you up to seven minutes. There are different things, different segments. This book has different chapters and all the chapters are as exciting and can lead into one another. So that's where this uh, came from. So yeah. Which means that if you're using different chord structure or advanced chord structures or just going in a different route, why not? You know, try it out for yourself. Let me know how you get along. Now, my name is Anilo Kitchen. If you want to find some music, you can find it on Bandcamp. So, um, yeah, the Mixer Project. My, I spoke to Ferry and Ferry said, listen, um, I was a bit, I was searching for how I was going to do it. Now what happens is we have this one PCB and there's another PCB that sits on top of it because otherwise we couldn't fit everything in there. So there's one big PCB with the um, uh, things that we need on there. 
on there you know so we have the transformers in place so this is an analog mixer no dsp kind of stuff is in there at the moment you know it's going to be an old school analog mixer and then there is the fader part that goes on the top then we are um uh, yeah he said he's at the point of finalizing that it should be done in two weeks and then we can order everything the case is already done it's amazing so and it's going to look like that old school cassette deck you know that brushed metal with the wooden panels on the side Woo, vintage that's what i'm looking at at the moment um yeah i'm not sure on how many channels it's going to be because <laughs> looking at my setup i started with oh four channels should be good and then six channels and now i'm thinking eight so there's a master section and then there's a different fader section so if you would need 12 faders that could be possible you know what i mean because in the end of the day um the sound quality the way we measured it it should be up there with studio high grade studio mixer material stuff so you get that 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 neve that that api that ssl quality in a small form factor to sit in a club now why is that important because i do believe that if you have an octa track and you've got an mpc you got a 1010 black box and then you've got like whatever a, a tracker or of some sort it, they all sound different now if you buy a music off beatport then it sounds the same pretty much you're in the ballpark you know maybe there's a discrepancy of certain percentage but in the end of the day you get away without not screwing up the sound system this is different for dollars performers and i do think that if the mixer can take care of a large part of it by introducing uh something like diode clapers would induce of or what transforms would induce get a few um, um get a characteristic sound to go sit on top of it and you'll hear it in, in instantly so from the minute you connect your gear onto that mixer it's a pleasing thing and when it's too loud it's too loud that's the analog way right i mean you can just push it to the point where it's like it's cool it's cool it's cool and it's gone you know so that's what i was trying to just get into now keep your eyes on this space is exciting times um do leave a comment in the section below let me know if you like this at all thank you for watching and i'll catch you next week you know where on another video i'm in a location and i'm out peace <laughs>